to the channel. Today we're going to start working on redoing the interior of the red crew cab. So I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail exactly what we're doing today, so let's get started. So this is the original dash from the truck that the guy uh, threw in as well. Um, and I just put it up on the table to show you some stuff for demonstration purposes. And then we'll get into actually pulling out the gauge cluster, cleaning it up, putting new lights in, repainting the needles, and making it look brand new again. So the first step is to remove the dash gauge bezel. This is held on by six screws. The first one is right here, and then there's one, two, three, four, and five here. So remove all of those screws. If you have a map light, you'll want to take those screws out at this point as well. Now some people will say that you need to actually loosen the bolts that hold the steering column in and lower the column down to remove this. In my experience, that's not necessary. I've been able to take many of them out without messing with the steering column at all. So once all those screws are out, you need to lift this bezel out away and bring it up over the steering column. And what you'll find is you just have to pay attention to all the corners because there's lips on the bezel that get caught under the dash. Now if your bezel has never been removed before, the tabs that hook into the dash, they don't have barbs on them, they do just slide out, but from the factory they come with some really sticky tape on them. So make sure you have all those screws out if you're getting resistance pulling it out, it's probably that factory tape and you just have to give it some firm pressure to get it out. For example, there's one of the tabs right there, there's one, and there's one. Now once you get this out, there's going to be a couple plugs plugged into your message center right here. So you can't pull it all the way out, you've got to unplug those first, and then you should just be able to lift it straight out. Once you have the bezel out, you can remove the cluster. So the cluster is held on by a couple screws. One, two, three, four, five, and this one, number six. So if you take all six of those screws out, you can gently lift it out. Make sure these tabs clear and be very careful because this is old plastic, so it's pretty brittle. So be careful as you take it out. And again, there will be a, a, two plugs, one over here and one up on this side that are connected to the back of it that you have to unplug. Alright, we've got the bezel out, we've got the gauge cluster out. Again, be careful when you're handling these things because it's old plastic, typically it's pretty brittle. Alright, now we have to take the cover off of the gauges. There are eight torque screws and they are T20 torques. pieces out. Again, be very careful with this. So there's a couple that are held on by Torx and there's a few Phillips heads here as well. out you can pull off just the speedometer face but that makes it so you have to take the needle off as well I want the needle to stay on there so what I'm going to do is take off these three torx heads and it should pull the whole speedometer unit out as one unit I'm going to be replacing with LEDs today. Some people will do the dummy lights and the warning lights and the uh, brights um, and replace those with LEDs. Um, 
I'm not gonna do that because I don't really care that those are any brighter than what they are already. All right, so we got everything cleaned out pretty well. Um, so from this point forward, everything I use, I'm gonna have links in the description below of what I use. I've got these new LED bulbs. I've got this aluminum tape. And then when we repaint the needles, I've got this acrylic paint that we're gonna use. All right, so before we replace the six bulbs, what I'm gonna do is use some of this aluminum uh, tape that's for HVAC ducting. And I'm gonna put a strip all along this outside perimeter. And what that's gonna do, the gauges don't have lights that shine directly on them. These lights shine back behind them and then that light is supposed to flood out around the gauges. So this aluminum tape will allow that light to flood more evenly. except this block off plate which is visible with the top on so I didn't cover that. Now it is time to change the bulbs out. So these are the LEDs that I'm going to use. I've got a link to these in the description below. Now the easiest way to remove these is actually just to gently wiggle and pull from the front Just like that. Okay, and then we'll get the new LED. There it is. So we'll change all six of those, and then we'll move on to cleaning and repainting the needles on the gauges. Okay, so they're all in. So now what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna take this back out to the truck, plug it in and turn them on and make sure they're all functioning correctly before we move on and clean this stuff and get it all put back together. I've heard with these LED bulbs, sometimes uh, A, they can come and a few of them may not be working and B, it may seem like it's not working but you have to pull it out, turn it 180 degrees to change the contacts and then they work. So I'm gonna go try that and uh, once we're sure that they're all working, we'll move on to the gauges. All right, so I have it plugged in. And there we can see they're working except for the two corner ones. So. And that's all it took was just flipping at 180 degrees. So that one seems to be a little dysfunctional. I'm gonna go grab one of the other bulbs and throw it in there. And there we have it. So I just, I replaced that with a different one. So again, like I said, sometimes they can be a little dysfunctional from the factory, but there they are. All right, so there we have it. Um, if you click on my link to these in the description, you'll see there's different tones of whiteness that you can get. I got cool white because I think that'll look nice. Soft white may be better for the stock kind of look, but I think this cool white will look nice. So 
There we go, we've got all that ready. Now it is time to address the gauges. So essentially what we're going to do is just clean the faces really good. Clean this piece really good. And then I'm going to show you guys how to paint the needles. So let's get started on that. Alright, so here's the paint we're going to use. It's an acrylic fluorescent red. Got the paint. Got some paint brushes from Hobby Lobby. I think the best way to do this is to kind of tape off underneath the needle with tin foil. So I've got this all taped off and the one thing you'll have to make sure to do so that it's easier to paint is the base of where the needle's at is black. So I don't want to paint that so that's where I got this masking tape right up there to get a nice line against it. So I'm going to tape off all the other ones and then we'll start painting. everything back together and I'll give you a full view of it. I'm going to change the bulb in the temperature control unit uh, to the LED bulb as well which I think that'll help as well but I'm really impressed with this. It was kind of a tedious process but it wasn't hard per se. It just took patience and, uh, and time so let's get it put back together in the morning and I'll show you the finished product. have it. Uh, 
uh, that was not a hard project, just took some time. That little project just made that interior seem 10 times nicer than what it did. So it's really fun with these trucks. The smallest projects you do uh, can have a big effect on how they make the truck feel. So don't be afraid to tackle small projects. Just work on one thing at a time. Don't feel overwhelmed if you've got too much to work on. Just pick one thing, work on it, get that done, and then move on to the next. And as soon as you know it, you'll have a truck just like my Silver Crew cab that's very, very nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like below if you did, and we will see you in the next video.